Genesis chapter number 15 and verse number 13. And he said unto Ab Abram, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years. Also that land whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterwards shall they come out with great substance. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come thither, uh, come hither again, for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet full. Amen. And in verse number 13, he said, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, shall serve them, they shall afflict them four hundred years. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. After four generations they're going to come back home again. And by the help of the Lord, I'm going to speak about this subject. God always keeps his promise. Yes, he does. God always keeps his promise. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your word that's forever settled in heaven. Pray that a special anointing would fall heavy upon us here today. God, I pray that, that we're speaking. And I know that we've taken a bit of time in the first service. God, I know that, but I know that you spoke to me. And I pray, oh God, that you would help me to present what you have. In the name of Jesus, we ask these things. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for standing in honor to the word of God. When God called Abram out of the Ur of the Chaldees, he told him his, his first thing was is that he would give to him, number one, a nation, number two, a land, and, and then he would bless him with a spiritual blessing. And, uh, and then he would, and by him, all of the nations of the earth would be blessed in his seed. That was the first promise that God gave. When we read in chapter number 15, there's a the passage of scripture is prophetic in the fact that everything else that God has promised has always been take a look around you this land is going to be yours you're going to walk the length and the breadth of it it will be yours you will have it and it's going to be yours free and clear but when I step into chapter 15 I read just a little bit of a twist that seems to put, take, take a bit of hesitancy because it seems like that's not the way the promises of God should read. For the Bible said in verse number 13, and you, your seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs and shall serve them and they this play in this land that they are living in, they shall afflict them 400 years. And then it, it, God will bring a judgment against that nation. And God will bring Israel out uh, with great substance. And, uh, and he said, God will. And so God says, I'm going to bring them into a land. And they will be afflicted for 400 years. That doesn't sound like a good promise. Matter of fact, that sounds like a pretty, pretty bad promise. But God didn't stop with the 400 years. He said at the end, when they come out, yes. they're going to be a nation that's going to have the wealth of the country they're in. And I will put my blessing upon them. And it's not time for them to receive their blessing right this second. But when the time comes, oh, hallelujah, I'm going to bless them. Now, when I step over into the 50th chapter of, of Genesis and verse number four, 24, and, and I'm going to go fast, but uh, I'm, uh, we, we'll go try to get it real quick so you can understand what I'm saying. Joseph said unto his brethren, I die and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swear to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph said, I'm getting ready to die. And, uh, and I want you to know this. God made a promise to our forefather, Abraham, that we would come into this land. He didn't know that it would be Egypt. It would be Egypt. But God let us into this land. We're going to be here a while. I'm dying. 
You're going to bury me. You're going to bury me in Egypt. But I want you to understand there is coming a day. And now he could have done the math, but he didn't. He just said there is coming a day when God will bring you out. When he brings you out, get into the pyramid or whatever cave or wherever I'm at. And you take my bones with you into that promised land. And, uh, and so he again was standing on the promise that God had made to Abraham. Things were, and, and things were going good for them uh, at that particular time. There was no persecution at that time. When you step into the book of Exodus, the Bible said there came a king that did not know, or a Pharaoh that did not know Joseph, and he began to feel intimidated. From that time forward, there was an affliction. If I read in Exodus chapter number 12 and verse number 40, and, and, and we'll run a little bit faster, but now the sojourning of Israel who dwelt in Egypt was 430 years. It's a little bit of a conflict because God had said that it would be 400 years, but he said it would be 400 years of affliction. So there's a 30 year gap where you see that they weren't afflicted. But at the end of 430 years, God said, it's time for you to come out. He told Abraham 430 years before. He said, or over, over 400 years before, he said, I will bring them out. Yes. Hallelujah. And... And, uh, and 400, over 400 years later, God kept his promise. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I'm going to take this real quickly. There was a time that Israel backslid. And in their time of backsliding, they did not give the land the rest that, it was, that the law told them to give it. And, uh, and they robbed God of what he asked them to give. And so God said, because you won't let the land rest, I'm going to take you out of the land so the land can rest. When you figure the amount of time that the land needed to rest, it comes up with a figure of 70 years. It isn't until you get to the book of Jeremiah the 25th chapter and verse number 11, that this is what the Bible said. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. And it shall come to pass when the 70 years are accomplished that I will punish the king of Babylon and that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity, and the land of the Chaldeans will make it and will make it a perpetual desolation. So God said, at the end of 70 years, amen, the way that I brought them out, I'm going to bring them in. Again, in, ver in chapter 29 and verse number 10 of Jeremiah, thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and will perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. God said 70 years before, I'm bringing you out of the land of Israel because of your disobedience, because of your sin. But understand this, 70 years later, mark my words, because in 70 years, I'm coming back Hallelujah. And I'm bringing Israel back into their land again. And so Daniel, in Daniel chapter number 2, or Daniel chapter number 9, rather, and verse number 2, in the first year of his reign, and uh, we're talking about uh, in uh, Darius, in the first year of Darius, the king of Ahasuerus, of the son of the Medes, which, made, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, 
Amen. Understood by books the number of years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Israel. Now, when I begin to read this, amen, and, uh, and as I'm looking at it even today, amen, the Bible said in the first year of Darius, he read this prophecy. When we go forward, I believe it's in the book of Haggai, Amen. It, uh, we're in those last little prophets down there, and I can't remember all of, all of them. The word of the Lord begins to come to a man by the name of Zerubbabel. Amen. And, uh, and the Bible said it was in the second year of Darius and, a second, and in a particular month. God spoke to Zerubbabel in the second year of of King Darius, and he said, I'm, it's time now for the foundation to be built, and it's time for the walls, amen, of the temple to be built. A year before, amen, that Daniel, as he's reading, one year before it was being fulfilled, Daniel's reading from the book of Jeremiah. And he comes to the place that we read in Jeremiah chapter 25 and Jeremiah chapter 29. He said, I understood by the reading that when 70 years are accomplished, God's going to bring Israel back home again. And there's going to be a rebuilding. And he said, I begin to pray, amen, and if I can put it in this type of a setting, he said, I prayed in anticipation of what God was going to do. In other words, he said, I don't see it at the moment, but God's made a promise. And I can do the math, and I know when we left Jerusalem behind, amen, I was there when God, amen, visited them with judgment and the temple Things in the temple were taken to Babylon. When I do the math, I can see that we're sitting at about the 69th year. Now, I don't know how it's going to happen, but I know this much. God made a promise, and whatever God said in his promise, I can take it to the bank because God will always keep his promise. And one year later, amen, suddenly the minor prophets began to talk to Zerubbabel and each one of them in their own way are saying, it's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord. Don't despise the day of small things. The foundation is laid, but the walls, amen, of the temple will come up, amen, and God in a moment, excuse me, in a moment of time at that 70th year, as, as he had promised, he brought it to pass because when God makes a promise, he will always keep his promise. Whether it be 400 years or whether it be 70 years, it makes no difference to God. He will always keep his promise. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. When I begin to read in the book of Genesis, chapter number 3, amen, in verse number 15, the Bible said... God said, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. It's talking about none other than Jesus Christ and what he would do at Calvary. In Genesis 22 and verse number 18, And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. And God spoke to Abraham, and said, in thy seed shall all of the nations of the earth be blessed. Talking about, again, Jesus Christ and what would happen, amen, in Bethlehem. Isaiah chapter number 7 and verse number 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel Amen. And then the New Testament identifies it, which being interpreted is 
God with us. Isaiah went on to say in the, in the ninth chapter, For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. And of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David, and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justness from henceforth even forever. God said it will take place. There will be a child and that child will be called the mighty God. This child will be born of a virgin. Amen. And this child a man will be born in Bethlehem. According to Micah, he will be born in Bethlehem. In Isaiah chapter 29 and verse number 18, And in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book, and the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity and out of darkness. In 53 of Isaiah, He was wounded for our transgression, bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and by His stripes we are healed. Each one of them pointed forward to the day that Jesus Christ would come, hallelujah, amen, and minister among us. It isn't until Luke 24 and verse number 44 that we hear these words. And he said, Jesus said unto them, These words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. He said, There's not been one prophecy that's not been fulfilled. Why? Because God always keeps His promise. It doesn't matter if it spans a thousand years, two thousand years, or four thousand years. When God makes a promise, amen, He's not like man. He won't forget his promise. He will always fulfill what he says that he will do. Hallelujah. Amen. Joel chapter number two. In the last, and it shall come to pass. Amen. It shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your old men will dream dreams. And your young men shall see visions. You know what I'm talking about. He was talking about the church of the living God being born. He said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Zechariah chapter number 6 and verse number 12. A man spoke this word, word, and as I was reading it just the other day, a man, it said, And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the word of the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold the man whose name is the branch. I don't have time to deal with it, but the branch is Jesus Christ. A man, he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Amen. He said he will build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord and he shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne and he shall be a priest upon his throne. Amen. And so when we look at this, we understand that Jesus is to build, amen, a temple. And he is to be the one that will bear the glory. And he will rule from the throne. And he will be the priest upon his throne. When I step over into Matthew chapter number one, chapter 16 and verse number 18, Jesus said, I, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I will give to you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. 
And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the house where they were sitting. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost fell on all them. Amen. Hallelujah. When Peter began to preach on the day of Pentecost, he said there's three steps, amen, to enter into this plan of salvation. He said, first of all, you have to repent of your sins. You've got to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of of the Holy Ghost. He said without it. Hey man you hadn't quite got there yet. But he said if you will get it. It's something great. Hey man that it's a gift that God. Wants to give you. Hallelujah. Now Jesus said. Upon this rock. I will build my church. And the gates of hell. Shall not prevail against it. So in Acts chapter number 4 and verse number 12, it's not by accident when he said, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. He was saying, you can't go to the name of Muhammad. You can't go to the name amen, of any other God, but you have got to go to the name of Jesus Christ. A title won't get you there. Amen. Man, there's nothing else that'll get you there, but you gotta have the name of Jesus Christ upon your life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. And just in two revival settings, over 8,000 folks were baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and filled with the glorious gift of the Holy Ghost. I know, hallelujah, that God keeps his promise because 2,000 years after Acts chapter 2, I'm still, hallelujah, carrying on a part of the book of Acts. I received the Holy Ghost. I was baptized in his name. I had my sins remitted. Oh, hallelujah. And I'm still preaching that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I still believe he has a name that is highly exalted. Hallelujah. That at the name of Jesus, every knee would bow and every tongue would confess that he is Lord. I know he keeps his promise because he kept his promise 400 years. Amen. For, Mo, for Abraham. And he brought them out. I know he keeps his promise because he kept his promise through Jeremiah. And the children of Israel came back to the land of Israel again. I know he keeps his promise because, amen, when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son made of a woman to redeem men who were under the law. Amen. He said in Galatians chapter 4 we read that. And then I know he keeps his promise because there is a church and the gates of hell have not been able to stop the church. Amen. We're, I know that there's not that many of us in the service today but I want you to know that the church is not just this local assembly. This church is worldwide and if you were to add the members worldwide of this glorious apostolic church amen you would be amen well over millions of people people. Hallelujah. Because there have been millions that have been received the Holy Ghost in the world today. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't tuck our heads and say we're the only ones. Amen. God has lifted up his church and he has exalted his church. I know he keeps his promise. Hallelujah. But he said in Acts chapter number one through the angels. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by, by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into the heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. 
the angels gave them a preview of something that was going to be greater. He said, I know he came, but he's coming away. He's coming back again. Thessalonians said, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. The voice of the archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ. Amen. He said, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Amen. In Matthew chapter number 24 and verse number 3. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of the coming of the end of the world? He said, I'll, I'll tell you, take heed that no man deceive you, for many shall come in my name. Say that I am Christ, and deceive many. You shall hear wars and rumors of wars. Be not troubled. These things must come to pass. He said, he said for these things, for... For he said, nation must rise, shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. There shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse places. All these things are the beginning of sorrows. Another place he said, as it was in the days of Sodom and Gomorrah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Son of Man. It's not by accident that what we, the law that was passed a few a few weeks ago. It's not by accident. Amen. That they would, that they would pass a law by our government that would say same-sex marriage. It's not by accident. Because we're just fulfilling prophecy. It, you, you see, whenever God makes a promise, He always keeps His promise. Hey Abraham, I'm, I'm standing with you in the wilderness, and and and, I, and I'm I'm talking to you. In the midst of the night, and you're saying, I don't understand everything that's going on right now, God. And he said, he said, uh, he, he said, in 400 years, you're going to come out of Egypt. And uh, you're going to be dead and gone with your fathers. But your family is going to come out of Egypt. I promise you. Hey, Jeremiah. I promise you in 70 years you're going to come back to Jerusalem again. Hey Isaiah, I promise you there's going to be a Messiah that will be born. Hey Joel, I promise you there's a church that's going to be born. Oh, hallelujah. And I hadn't seen it come to pass yet. But he said, when you see these things begin to come to pass, then lift up your eyes, for your redemption draweth nigh. What I'm bringing to us today is our real message of hope. Because just as he's kept his promise through the centuries to others, just because he hasn't come yet, doesn't mean he's not coming. He's coming very quickly. Oh, hallelujah. I know he is because he always keeps his promise. Oh, hallelujah. If I didn't feel his presence today, I would know that he was going to keep his promise. Amen. If I, if I worshiped and I didn't feel anything, I know that he could still come today because he can still keep his promise. Hallelujah. But I have felt his presence in this place. And I know that it's not going to be long, and he's coming back. In other days, they prepared for the time when the promise would be fulfilled. And in today, it's important that we prepare. Because once the time comes, I don't have, I, I don't have a calendar that says on August the 19th of this year, God's going to come. See, he's going to come at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. I can't say that. The Bible doesn't give us that. But what I can tell you is, when he comes, he's not given a second warning and a second chance. And it's important for us that I not only get ready, but that I stay ready for his soon return. Hallelujah. Let's stand together today. He's coming soon. 
And he will always keep his promise. In the name of Jesus Christ. I love you, Lord. I thank you for your goodness. Hallelujah. Thank you for all that you have done. I thank you, Lord, for the way that you've kept your promise in our lives. Hallelujah. I pray, O oh Lord, that in this service today, that if there are those, those that have not yet received the Holy Ghost, that they would somehow find a place in you. Hallelujah. As my wife begins to play, if, if you want to receive the Holy Ghost today, why don't you come? If you're not there where you need to be with the Lord, why don't you come?